This is a video for physics 11 for waves, the wave unit. And today we're going to figure out how to calculate the speed of light using some marshmallows and a microwave oven. So for this activity, you need some mini marshmallows, a microwave safe dish, something to mark uh, your spot with where the marshmallows have melted the most. Uh, you can use toothpicks. I don't have any toothpicks, so I'm going to use some matchsticks. You'll need a ruler and something to hold your dish up off the turn uh, the, the spinny thing in the microwave, the turntable, and of course the Star Wars show, a microwave oven. To set this up, we need to remove the turntable from our microwave. Uh, they've put this in to uh, eliminate any hot spots in your food, and we actually want to create a hot spot. So you need to carefully take this glass plate out and put it somewhere safe where it's not going to drop on the floor. You need to take out the little roller that moves it along. And you'll need to add some spacers. I'm using these wooden spoons. We need to make sure our dish is up off the little gear here so that our dish doesn't spin. We really want everything to be nice and still so that we can figure out where our nodes are and where our maximum amplitude is. You'll want uh, a single layer of your marshmallows, kind of like this. You know, a bit of unevenness is fine, but you should aim for a single layer. And pop them in the microwave. You can see we've put a spacer so the, the, the device that turns the turntable isn't going to make your dish turn. And we're going to microwave these on low. Don't get carried away and zap them on high. You're going to miss the, the action part. So on my microwave, I can set the power level by pushing the power button. I'm going to try about 30% and set the time for two minutes and see what happens to see if this will work. You probably have enough marshmallows, you can do a second try if you need to. But we're going to run this until our marshmallows have little uh, areas where they're starting to foam up. So it took about a minute and a half on 30% for me to see the uh, the softening part of the mic of the marshmallows, and you know I'm going to mark the middle of my hot spots with some sticks. You can feel around where is it extra gooey, and pop some sticks in there. Okay, and they might not be in a straight line. They might not be all exactly the same distance apart but you can mark where are the areas with the highest amplitude. How far apart are they? Is that one wavelength? Is that two? So think about what we learned with standing waves and you can kind of make a grid where are the areas with the highest uh, amplitude, the highest energy that have melted your marshmallows and you can measure them, take an average, and figure out what's the wavelength for this system. We're going to take our ruler and measure how many centimeters apart each of these hot spots are. And you can use that to calculate the speed of light. Now you might be wondering, what does all this have to do with calculating the speed of light? Uh, you know, melting marshmallows is fun and all, but where are we going with this? Well, remember, we have some tools we can use. We have the universal wave equation. We know the speed equals the wavelength times the frequency. And we can find the frequency of our microwave oven by, sometimes they have it on the door. There's a little label 
or on the back, or if you're lucky, you've saved the instruction manual. If you don't have any of that, you can do what I did and Google it. So I just Googled general electric microwave frequency and up, up, up popped the number for my microwave. They said all those brands run at 2,450 megahertz. Okay, so there's our first value we need. Secondly, you're going to take your readings. How far was it between melted points? You may have had some four centimeters, five centimeters, a couple of six. So you add all these up, you may have had more. You add up your total and divide by the number of readings and you get your average. Now we don't just plug this into the equation. We need to think about what this means. When you had a melted spot, you had a high energy point. And in between you had nodes where not much was happening. And if you remember from our standing waves, we get maximum amplitude here and here. Halfway between is going to be half a wavelength. So the distance between maximum amplitudes is half a wavelength. So your average value here, you can say that equals wavelength over two. And then you can say, well, my wavelength equals this amount. So now you have the information you need. You have the frequency, you have the wavelength. Be sure to resolve your, your units and you can find out what is the speed of my microwaves. And how does that compare to C, speed of light in a vacuum? 